Dylan for singing tonight. We're sure you're going to miss Brother Dylan and uh, Miss Kaylee and Claire especially. Uh, appreciate their time here, their help here. They've been a help to us here at First Baptist Church, musically, graphically, and relationally. So we're going to miss them. If you have your Bibles open to Ephesians chapter 5 tonight, and the service course will bring them up here. And uh, we'll deal with him like we do with our friends. We'll stick them, give them some money on the way out. All right? So that'll be at the end of the service. So you have your Bibles, eight, Ephesians, I'm sorry, Ephesians chapter 6, not Ephesians 5, Ephesians 6 tonight. As we continue on in our, in our thought on spiritual warfare, I tell you tonight, you are singing well. You sure encourage my heart, and can it be? Now I'll tell you, I'll tell you when you know that revival has hit First Baptist Church. I'm singing, and I watch your faces while you sing, and man, people are singing all over the place. I remember the day when, when it would just be uh, scattered people singing, and, uh, but boy, people are singing, lifting up voices and praise to our God. But then I see that the sound guy is singing too. Oh, Brother Ryan, you were singing over there. I saw you. All right. And I saw the camera guys singing as well, the cameramen. Oh, yeah, Brother Kyle, Brother, Brother Brendan back there is singing away. You know that revivals hit when those people are singing as well. But you're just, so I almost fell to my knees and just said, you know, that's it, invitation time. But I tell you, it's a neat thing what God is doing here at First Baptist Church. And uh, it's not because of us, it's always in spite of us. We want to do our part and be faithful, but God is gracious to us. And I'm glad, thank you, that you're here. And uh, boy, there's nothing, nothing like being here. I understand many people can't be back yet, I understand that. No pressure from me. I don't ever want you to feel pressure from me. You pressure from the Lord and all these things, but not from me. I miss you. And if I call you, all right, don't be worried. If you're not here and I call you, don't think I'm calling to make sure you come back to church. I'm calling you because I miss you. And you don't always know why, some, why someone's not here. It could be because uh, they're sick or they're, they're afraid about being sick, and I understand that. Or you're just mad at me. Or I don't know which one it is. And all those are legitimate reasons, all right? All, all legitimate reasons. And uh, Brother Scott had a loud amen. And uh, just ignore him, folks. And uh, uh, no, no. Um, but I'm glad you're here. I tell you, as we as a congregation sing those songs together, all right, my heart's encouraged. Hope your heart's uplifted in fellowship of the saints of God. What a good thing it is to be, to be in the house of God. We'll never take that for granted. And uh, boy, it's just, uh, Ephesians chapter number 6, I could, I'm ready to preach tonight. That was a good service so far. And uh, we'll pray, Lord, I don't mess it up. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 10, where the Bible says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Just to remind you from last week, you may be strong in some other things. You may be strong in finding good deals, and that's a blessing. A frugal wife is, is, a, is, is a wonderful blessing, and my wife's very frugal about that. Though she likes to spend money, too, she likes to find the good deals. I'm, I'm glad for that. Some of you men are, are strong in the art of hunting, and I'm, and I'm glad for you. I really am glad for you. I've told my story years ago. I won't bore you with it now, but everyone who doesn't hunt has a hunting story, of which I am no stranger. I have a hunting story. To, to make it a small, short story, Pastor Scott almost shot me. That's my story, not his. Whatever he says, I've got the better story, and I'll have the pulpit more frequently than he does, so don't worry about that. But some of you are strong in hunting, and that's okay. Some are strong with their, their hands and, and mechan mechanically inclined, and that's a blessing. And some uh, with, with, their, with numbers or with math, and that's wonderful. Some with finances, and those are good things. God blesses us individually, but this passage is not talking about those talents. It's talking about something else. And he says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Though you may have other gifts and talents and abilities and enjoyments along the path, don't miss being strong in the Lord. What a shame it would be to go to heaven one day as a saved man, as a saved lady, a saved young person. And give an account for all the things you did here on earth, but you missed being strong in the Lord. You missed the power, the Bible says, of His might. Verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Understand something, my friend, that there are wiles of the devil. There are traps of the devil. There are attacks from the devil. 
All right, do not have your head in the sand and think it won't happen to us, it won't happen to me. We're not going to be under attack, we will not face opposition. The attacks are there, the opposition is there because we're a child of God. And if you're saved, you're a child of God. And by the mere fact of you being a Christian, there will be opposition. You will not be understood all of the time. In fact, a lot of the things, if you're a, a Christian who's right with God and you structure your life biblically, the decisions you make will be to those who are not saved, the Bible says, foolishness. They're on our end spiritually discerned, and someone who's not saved can't spiritually discern it. They don't have the Holy Spirit. They'll wonder why you'll drag your family to church again and again and again and again and again why you would neglect a wonderful weather outside like today I haven't heard that my message was fitting because of the snow and some of you had to struggle to be thank thankful today with the weather outside right that's where the rubber meets the road it's all nice in here you walk outside and the snow hits you in the face then you gotta be thankful giving thanks always for all things it must include snow it must there will be opposition. The Bible is defining some of these things for us in verse 12 and following. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Tonight, with the Lord's help, I'd like to look at the battle within. In the next few weeks, we'll be looking at some of the spiritual warfare that we're in that God has called us in, and I don't want us to miss it. We can't blindly walk through this age and through this time on earth thinking that everything's A-OK. -okay. The Bible tells us that there is something going on here, and we must, as Christians, be prepared and be victorious. All right, we're supposed to be prepared, and God has promised us the victory. There's some Christians, like we looked at last week, who are frolicking. Frolicking in this walk, in their, in their Christian walk. Going to work, coming back home, and doing this and doing that. And there are some things that we must live to occupy till He comes. But, but we're not called to frolic. We're not called, to, we're called to something greater as Christians. And I want to tonight, with the Lord's help, look at the battle within. If you would turn your, in your Bibles over to, over to 2 Corinthians chapter number 10. 2 Corinthians chapter number 10, Paul, again, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, wrote on some things, some struggles, some battles that we face on the inside. Verse number 1, he, says, he writes, Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and the gentleness of Christ, who in the presence and base among you, but being absent and bold towards you, but I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with you, that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. You see, Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, reminds us of that same concept. You remind the Corinthians, the Ephesians, both to us as Christians. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh it's as if it is one of the most common hindrances to Christians walking in the flesh we think our battles are in the flesh but our battles are not there our battles are not in the flesh verse number four for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds Casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Lord, I thank you for this time. Lord, I thank you for what you've done already in the service as we sing and, and praise and worship to you, Lord. I pray our hearts would be encouraged and challenged. But Lord, I pray now as we look at your word, Lord, the preaching is preeminent. You are to have the first place in this in this service, Lord. We're praying that you would take this truth and you would do something in hearts tonight. I don't know all the needs that are here or at 
home or online somewhere or who will listen to this at another point. But you know the needs. You know the battles that we face, the struggles. And Lord, I pray that tonight you would meet with us, you would touch us, and you would help us to be obedient to you. Lord, would you show us that victory is possible. That our battles in our mind, but we must face them not with our weapons, but with your weapons. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen. 1987, in Uganda, there was a rural army outpost. Soldiers there, guns like a normal, normal army unit. But there were some rebels that were there in Uganda that decided to attack the base. Hundreds of them, 700 in fact, gathered to attack this army base in Uganda. When they began the attack, the soldiers on the base noticed some strange occurrences. Most of them were not wearing a shirt. They had their pants rolled up, and though a few had army boots, they were coming at them with just their pants on and no shirt, but they appeared to have oil spread on their skin and they kept on throwing rocks. Of course, the, as the account goes, the soldiers were armed with grenades and guns. And very quickly, the onslaught of the rebels with only their rocks and half-clothed bodies with oil smeared on them were quickly stopped. Many were were shot initially in the attack. Others were captured. When they began to talk to some of the, the prisoners, they found out that there was a witch doctor that had told them, these rebels, that they could succeed in victory against this army outpost if they did a few things. If they chanted, God is there, and if they spread this magic oil on their bodies, the bullets would bounce off like they were rubber. And the witch doctor told them that God had promised these rebels the victory and that their rocks they threw would explode like hand grenades. Except the bullets didn't stop and bounce off like rubber. The oil wasn't effective except maybe keeping the mosquitoes away. And the rocks didn't explode like hand grenades. They bounced like a normal rock. And many men lost their life following this convoluted, crazy idea. I'm afraid as Christians... When we face the battles that we all, in one way, shape, or form, face, I'm afraid that too often we use carnal or earthly weapons to fight a spiritual battle. Specifically, battles in our mind. And tonight, with the Lord's help, I want to take just a little bit of time and, and open this passage up a little way. We'll come back to it. Believe me, I, I know we will. I look at the notes, and it's one of those nights. We'll be back here again, I promise you. But many of us have struggles here and here. Struggles that, that plague us. Thoughts that, that, that come and enter into our mind, uh, struggles about, about the goodness of God and the mercy of God, thoughts about, uh, thoughts about anxiety in this pandemic. One consequence of, of this shutdown has been people's mental health has been absolutely on a large scale ruined. Suicide hotlines have been, have been just bombarded with phone calls. People, even young children. I read an interesting article, uh, the, un, uh, was it the Unknown Factor. I think it was called The Unknown Factor, something along those lines. They talked about how children uh, get their emotional stability from their parents. I read that I identified with that. I could see how that could be true and probably is true in our house. If mom and dad are happy, kids tend to be happy. When mama ain't happy, ain't, ain't nobody. How do you know that? Ain't nobody happy. And, 
when dad ain't happy, nobody cares, but uh, you know, it's just, well, they often grab the stability and their, and their emotional uh, level from the parents. And they said, because in this pandemic, so many people have walked in fear and anxiety and panic that kids, children, young children are now facing anxiety and panic. Things they never faced before and probably shouldn't have to face. The battle up here. Beyond that, it's in our hearts. Former Los Angeles Dodgers manager Tommy Lasorda was his name. Some of you are baseball fanatics. I am not. He described, though, his battle with bad habits. I'm thankful for the Reformers Unanimous Ministry at First Baptist Church. I'm thankful that, that on a regular basis we see that God changes lives. Right? But all of us struggle with bad habits. Some of us are willing to admit it. Some just deny it and pretend and try to hide it. But all of us have the flesh inside of us until we go to glory. That's, this is the battle within. But, but Tommy Lasorda, the manager, former manager for the Los Angeles Dodgers, described his battle with bad habits. This was his story. I took a pack of cigarettes from my pocket and stared at it and said, who's stronger, you or, or me? The answer was me, so I stopped smoking. Then I took a vodka martini and said to it, who's stronger, you or me? And the answer was me, so I quit drinking. Then I went on a diet. I looked at a big plate of linguine with clam sauce and said, who's stronger, you or me? And the little old clam looked up at, at me and said, I am. And I can't beat linguine. <laughs> Humorous, yes. True, absolutely. We began to face these battles here and here with external measures. I I'll make a good New Year's re resolution. This year, I'm not going to worry. So I'm not. I'm done worrying. Mind over matter. Except the Bible says... These battles are not fought with earthly human weapons. And maybe some of these things will have limited success in. That's the problem, right? But we actually see some uh, quasi-victories along the way. Like Tommy said, he, he beat cigarettes and he beat vodka, but he, but he couldn't beat linguine. And maybe linguine isn't your poison, but we all have battles within and the Bible teaches us here about the battles within. A couple thoughts tonight. Remember this. The first thought is this. Our battle within is not a battle without. Now let that sink in, right? It's, it's simple, but I believe profound. Our battle within is not a battle without. For instance, let's say you're dealing with anger tonight. A battle within. We want to pretend that the anger battle within is a battle without. I'm angry because of what this person did. You understand what I'm saying? The only reason there's a battle within is because of this battle right here without. And if this person right here was not in my life, there would be no more anger. So if I remove this outside external problem, the battle within is all soft. But the battle within is not a battle without. Now, 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 don't miss this. We say, well, okay, uh, uh, Pastor, I'm struggling with, with some depression. And that's a real thing. I've heard some people say, well, depression's uh, nothing, all right? You just man up and get over it. Foolish. Foolish. Battle within. Battle within. At times, spiritual battle. You say, well, you can f fight this if you do this, this, and this. But a battle within is not a battle without. Don't miss when he says, listen, there's some things that are happening inside of us with a, maybe a bad habit or a struggle. Well, if I just avoid all these wrong places, and we ought to avoid those things. I'm not saying those are bad things to avoid. Ultimately, that does not bring true victory. True victory is found in Jesus Christ. And it starts here. I may have to change some outward behaviors. I may have to change some actions. But a battle within is not a battle 
without. I'm going to talk about this thing inside of us. You see, our lives consist of more than what we see. You know what we see? We see bills. We see problems. We see the earthly things. We see weather, right? Every kind of weather in Michigan, and that's just in one day. This weekend, we're going to see sales. We'll get all up excited about these Black Friday sales. And listen, as you go out, if you go out shopping on Black Friday, God bless you. If you wear your First Baptist Church mask, then please act like a Christian. All right? For, 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 the, for the Lord's sake, act like a Christian. I, I've, I've heard stories from, from Christians, sometimes from this church, all right, and, and push and shove and knee and all this stuff to save a few dollars. Wow. Now, I'm all for saving money with the next guy. But to push, shove someone aside and push him out of the way to save $25, to save, oh, no, Pastor, I saved $100. Really? You act like an unsafe pagan for 100 bucks. That's what your Christianity's worth, $100? I'd hate to see what happens if you're going to save 500 bucks. There goes your morality. I'm sorry, last time I checked, my Christianity does not have a price tag on it. All right, I'm saved by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Our lives consist of more than what we see. Bills that need to be paid, sickness that threatens our happiness. Sickness that threatens our liberty. Sickness that threatens our peace of mind. Every single day, more sick. It's a real thing. COVID-19 first came about, and there were some, and there's still some that say this, well, it's just a hoax. <laughs> it's not. It's not. But, equally as true, God is still on the throne. He's still in control. Uh, Every, every day we wake up, Jesus is still ruling and reigning, and he's given us life every single day. Yet our lives consist of more than what we see. If we're not careful, our thoughts, our minds, our anxiety, all get wrapped around what we see. Where are my kids going? And, and listen, I'm sure, I only know part with three kids, but the treadways, they're running all the time with their kids, up and down, back and forth, and... Uh, Forgetting them here and there and everywhere. They're lucky you got to count them. One, two, three, okay. And um, it's easy to get sidetracked by what we see. This job, this problem, this sickness, this person. Boy, that person in the office, I could just. Boy, that boss, oh, I could just. Don't say anything, Pastor Scott. It's easy to get wrapped up in just what we see. But our lives consist of more than what we see. Insecurity that robs us of our safety. Our battle is not just against the physical things of this life. And too often Christians are, are just struggling. Let me just get through Christmas. Let me just get through the pandemic. Let me just get through this busy season. Let me get through this hard financial time. Pay off this bill. But our battles are not just against physical things. Our battle is not just against the elements of this world. Well, I hope for a good election. Me too. Me too. But I can't stop living. I can't stop being a Christian. I can't stop serving the Lord. I'm not going to move to another country unless God calls me there. God called me here. Our battle is not just against, against the elements of this world. Remember a few years back, and I don't, I don't have a problem with this, just be consistent, when uh, the transgender movement was really taking off, really taking root, and they are getting some victories in the public sector. And Target was one of the first companies to have bathrooms that could be used for, for either gender. Now, I don't care if there's a bathroom for boys and for girls. All right? Not all together, but a single bathroom. I don't care if it's, you know, we, uh, lots of bathrooms. Bathrooms in my house, a lady can use it, a man can use it, who cares? I do have a problem if someone says, here's a, you know, a communal bathroom, we can have boys and girls in there at the same time. I have a problem with that. I'm not going to use that bathroom. 
All right, but there are many people who got up in arms about Target. Now, I'm okay with them doing that. Remember that somebody did that and said, well, I'm never going back to Target again. I'm okay with that, all right? We're allowed to do that, and there are some times you may need to do that. They did the same thing with Starbucks and the Red Cup. I'm never drinking Starbucks again. I don't have a problem with that. But boy, they were ranting and raving. Well, they called me one day and said, Pastor, I have a problem. They don't live here. They're out of state friend of mine, they said, well, I said, what's the problem? They said, well, I'm struggling because uh, I want to go back to Target, but I said I'd never go back to Target again. What should I do? <laughs> Order online? I don't know. Why do you want to go to Target? Well, they have some things I want to buy. I said, well, you're, you're, you're in a little mess here, aren't you? I said, no one told, told you you had to, had to go off on a tangent yelling about Target, but you have. I said, well, can I go back to Target? I'm not the Lord in your life. I call me for? You're trying to you know, forgive you, my child. No, 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 no. I don't do that. I don't do that. I'm a Baptist, all right? Not a Catholic. I'm a Baptist. We talk through it. And the problem is, and you find this on social media, really quickly, Christians, we start to just battle the elements of this world. And every post is the election. Every post is what we think of, of decisions by the government, all right, good or bad. And listen, I don't agree with all the decisions, just like you don't. All right, but we ought to pray for those in, in, in positions of authority. And we can't get sidetracked by just the physical elements. Our battle is not against the physical elements. So quit wasting all your time battling the physical elements. Our battle is not just against some ideas. Well, I just want my kids to be successful. Then I pray all our young people are successful in God's economy. We had an excellent teen revival here last few days with Brother, Brother Ramos. He's a friend of mine, a great man who loves God and been a big help to our teenagers. Right, teenagers? Enjoyed him. He, did, he was a tremendous blessing to them. I'm praying that God will raise up more young people from this ministry to serve God with their life. All right, that's what I'm praying for. I can pray for that. All right, and I hope they're successful in God's economy. And if they follow the Lord, no matter what they do, I'll be proud of them for following God. Listen, I am blessed to be a pastor, but if God calls my son Johnny to be a doctor, praise God, you follow the Lord. That's no less important than being a pastor. I'll love him, and I'll say, but I'm praying he'll get to, be, to serve God like I do. I'm allowed to pray for that. All right, but you serve God, you follow God, however God leads you in your life, following God is the best plan. But just being successful, I don't care if he makes a lot of money. Now, if he does, hope he, he gives it back to me. <laughs> Paid a lot for him growing up, but I don't care. I don't care. You see, our battle, the Bible says here, look, in verse number 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing, here it is, that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. You know what the battle is, my friend? Those things that want to put themselves on top of the knowledge of God. That's the battle. God is here. Like we looked at this morning, he's supposed to be preeminent in my life, first place in my life. But there are a lot of thoughts that will come and want to put themselves on top of God. And the knowledge of God. God is holy. So I can't do this bad habit X, Y, and Z. It wants to exalt itself on top of the knowledge of God. It wants to say, even though God is holy, you can still do this and please God. It wants to exalt itself. And the battle is those things that want to exalt themselves on top of God. Panic. Anxiety. Ultimately, says, God, I don't really think you're in control. But we know from Scripture that God is in control. We know the truth that God sits on the throne and the Bible says he does whatsoever he will or he does anything that he wants to do because he's God. 
He's got the top seat. So if I begin to worry, if I begin to be afraid, Lord, are you really in control of this? Those battles put themselves on top. Bitterness. Lord, what you brought into my life wasn't good. And I don't think you can make it to be good. We can look back at the story of Joseph, right? Joseph, we would say by earthly measures, had a lot of bad things happen. Until you get to the end of the story. And then it's like the Lord goes to the wall and flips the switch. Click. And turns on the light. And you see it wasn't a mess. It was a master plan. And we see, boy, you need to be there and there and there and there. And now he's over there. Lord, it's kind of like you knew what you were doing the whole time. Bitterness says, Lord, I don't think you know what you're doing. Exalt itself against the knowledge of God. You see, as we begin to look at this next few weeks, understand something. That victory is possible through our Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know all the battles that you may face. They are problems to us. They plague us. But I know we have them. I have them. You have them. Anyone who says otherwise is not being honest. And your problems are a whole lot worse than my problems. Boy, you can't even give up Linguini. But I know the Bible says that victory is possible. Because verse 4 says this, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God. And I want to encourage you, my friend, tonight as we begin looking at the battle within, that it's a lie of the devil to stay inside of those particular struggles. To think that there is no hope possible. There was a missionary <clears throat> walking through the twisted streets of Hong Kong. And he came upon a tattoo studio. In the window, he said there were displayed various tattoos that were available. An anchor, a flag, a mermaid, he said. But what struck him with the most force were there were three little words of a tattoo you could get that said... Born to lose. Apparently he entered the shop with astonishment. Pointing to those words, he asked the Chinese tattoo artist, does anyone really have that terrible little phrase, born to lose, tattooed on his body? The man replied, well, yes. Yes. The missionary replied, well, I just can't believe that Anyone in his right mind would do that. And the tattoo artist, the Chinese man, simply tapped his forehead and said in broken English, before tattoo on body, tattoo on mind. Weapons of our warfare are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. I wonder if tonight in your life something is trying to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. I wonder if something tonight has been on your mind, on your heart. And you know what the Bible says, but those thoughts, those actions keep on coming on top. The Bible says, but thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. Victory is possible. In our battle within. Lord, I thank you for your word for the time tonight. And Lord, I don't know all of the struggles. 
someone may be facing tonight. Lord, I pray you'd help us. Lord, if you've touched us tonight to respond to you. Lord, I imagine that there are folks who are struggling with a battle in the mind or the heart. Lord, trying to face it with earthly measures of resolve, forgetting the spiritual aspect. Oh, God, help us. Lord, may the devil not have any foothold in this church, in these families, in these hearts. Lord, help us to respond to you. In Jesus' name, amen.